Hello, my name is Eric Normand, and I am doing a code review of this Clojure code. So I teach Clojure, and this is code from one of my students, and I want to give some tips and hints and general guidelines for where to go from here. And this is based, this code is based on a uh, course I did called Web Development in Clojure, where we develop a to-do list. And it looks like that he followed along uh, exactly with the course and then added to it. Uh, what he added was two things it looks like that I can tell. One is there's authentication. So you see there is a um, username and password stored in this user's variable var at the top level def uh, at 118, line 118, we got this username here. And we also have a, down here on line 124, it looks like he's using friend to authenticate requests. And then I see in the routes, he's using friend authenticated to wrap the handler uh, so that it's, an, it's considered an authenticated route, so you have to be logged in to use it. So that's pretty cool. Um, I've actually never used friend, so it's cool to see this. Um, so, and it looks like you're using the, the standard interactive form workflow, which, that's great. Um, users takes, I mean, uh, this credential FN that's on line 124, um, it takes a function, I believe, that's, and in this case, you're passing in users as your function, and so then it's going to look up the email address and get a map of username, password, and roles. And so one thing I would suggest as a possible, like, okay, it all looks good. Let me say that first. All this looks great so far. Um, I would suggest as a continuation, if you want to keep going with this app, making it more complex, is have an actual user registration system. So a user can sign up. It creates a record in the database. They can change their password. Uh, if you want to get into it, they can reset their password using an email authentication system, uh, and then they can log in. So that way you won't just be using this hard-coded uh, little user database. Um, that's, just a, uh, that's just a further complication that will make your app a little bit more realistic. Um, okay, so the lists and stuff, I'm going to look at that next, and then I'm going to look at the items. So let's see how this is. Uh, oh, wait, there's an auth namespace. I'm going to look at that first. I didn't realize it was there. So let's see what's in here. Handle login, response for the login page. Okay, that's cool. I like how you use the response uh, function from ring.util. That's neat. So here's the form. Please sign in. Nice, and yeah, pretty standard stuff there. Okay, I just wanted to see that. It's going to post to log in, and I assume that when you post to log in, that, let me go check that. I assume that um, that friend handles that, so handle login. auth, handler, handle login. Yeah, it doesn't actually log you in. I'm assuming that um, the post to login actually is handled by friend. If it's not, then I don't know how that's happening. So it must be. Okay. Uh, let me go look at the lists now. 
So it looks like the second thing that I see is that's different is there are multiple lists. So now you need a list of lists. So I'll check that on the view. Okay, so you got lists UL here at the top of the screen and it's making a good use of the H there because these are things that can be typed in by the user. Um, breadcrumb, oh I like that, let me see the breadcrumb. Where is the, ah there it is. So you're making a little list with home at the beginning and list, okay, neat. So that's like static, right? There's no arguments there, that's cool. Uh, lists UL, all right, create list form. Let me check that out. So it's just a regular list or a regular form. You give it a name and there's a button and it will post to slash lists. Yeah, that sounds great. So the list UL is just making LIs for that. So I'm wondering, so list is going to have name and items left. So I'm going to check on what those things are in your model. Okay, so you have ID, name, and created at, and read lists, I'm going to select ID, name, created at from list, or by. Okay, so I'm wondering where that, where that comes from. Let's see. Handle index list to do a read lists, and then list page. Okay, so maybe that's coming in nil. Uh, what I'm talking about is in the model you have three things. You have ID, name, and created at, just fine. But in the view, you have a thing called where is it here? On page on line 28, items left. And so I don't see where that's coming from, and I wonder if that is something you added or you uh, took away or you uh, added it halfway and have it. Yeah, that's a read. I mean, it seems like that's missing there. I was just curious what it was. Doesn't you don't need to have that if you don't want it. Like it redirect to lists. I like how you're using the utils. That's awesome. Uh, I didn't teach those, so it's doubly awesome because it means you're learning on your own. Uh, right. So I'm in the item now. And here's the form for creating an item. It's going to post to list ID uh, items. Cool. And it's got a name and description and a button. Delete item form. Okay, yep. Yeah, that's similar to what we had in the, if not the same as what we had in the uh, course. Update item form, right, it's going to do a put to, now see this is something we developed, it's a cool thing in the app that we developed is uh, if you put a, a an input with underscore method, you can override the actual method, which is going to be a post. Um, and there's a middleware that that you that does that. And that way you can get around the browser's limitation that you can only do get and post from a form. Okay, so then it's doing if checked false true, if checked done to do, awesome. Um, this table looks pretty standard. Breadcrumb, I like that. And the items page, so it's got items table. Okay, I want to see the model for your items because now, yes, it needs a list ID. That's right, so it has an ID, list ID, name, description, checked, and created at. Cool, so now, yeah, you've added a list ID parameter when you create an item. Um, 
and when you update it, you don't need it, of course. When you read, select ID, list ID, name, description, check to create that. There you go. Yeah. Um, so this is what I would work on next. Um, very good job. Um, it looks it looks great. It looks very um, professional and well formatted and well organized. Uh, it's very easy to read the code. Um, I didn't see any anything that stood out as weird. Um, I would just continue with it. I would add a way to uh, log in uh, to sorry to register a new user. So if I wanted to go to the site, I could put in a username and password. And you know, you could you could make it as complicated as you want. You could have it email the person to verify their email address, and then they'd have to click a link, you know, all that stuff that you're used to doing on some web apps. Also a reset password in case they forget, you know. Uh, and then look at um, segmenting the lists by user. And so have uh, lists owned by users and they, you know, that, that's the first thing. So if you are doing like show me all my lists, it's showing you your lists, right, only yours. And I can't, if I go to a URL that's not one of my lists, it, it you know, gives me an error or, you know, just says that that's not found, something like that. And then, so that's number two. First one is user registration. Number two, lists owned by users. And then number three is make it so that I can share a list with another user. So you still have that owner relation, you know, the owner relationship between the user and the list. And then you have a secondary one, which is um, shared with that person. Okay. Um, really great job. Um, keep it up. <laughs>